Well, Kim, we're here at Jackson State University where there's a pop-up COVID-19 vaccination clinic on the campus. It was the perfect spot for the First Lady to come and advocate for COVID-19 vaccinations and also advocate for Mississippians, telling them if they're eligible, take up the opportunity and get vaccinated. This is the first time we've heard from Thiesfeld since that shooting. He admitted his guilt in court today and got emotional when reading his statement. Yeah, Ariana, traffic is now freely flowing over the I-40 eastbound lanes and it partially reopened about an hour ago. And from our vantage point, which is right nearby the convention center, you can see those white headlights heading over the I-40 bridge every so often. And that's the first time we've seen that site in months. The bridge partially reopened ahead of schedule, originally scheduled to reopen Monday morning. But good weather allowed crews to finish their work early. The Chamber of Commerce says this ordeal hopefully brings about major changes changes in federal funding. Well, yes, again, well, actually, there were North Mississippians that were sent down to the Gulf Coast to help prepare for Hurricane Ida. 35 members known as Mississippi Task Force One there to help assist with rescue and recovery efforts. They're in a staging mode right now, waiting for Ida to push through before assisting in those operations. Now, as for here right now in North Mississippi, there are teams here ready and waiting. Bulldozer and other heavy machinery has been used to dig up the ground here at Overton Park to make way for a newly renovated nine hole golf course. This work has provided a unique opportunity for some people to find items buried underground for decades. While many people look at this and just see dirt, Steve Herr sees much more. I see potential. Her has walked nearly every foot of the dirt that once was the Overton Park golf course. I was out here in the snow in the mud, in the rain. <laughs> His trusty AT Max metal detector scanning along the way. This is an opportunity of a lifetime for metal detectors. Her, who owns his own motorcycle shop, picked back up the metal detecting hobby four years ago. I never know what I'm going to dig up. It's relaxing. It's good exercise. I'm outdoors. When he saw the Overton Park golf course created around the 1930s dug up, he saw an opportunity to hunt for artifacts. Removing the sod and topsoil has exposed a lot of items that were otherwise too deep to find, or the fact we couldn't hunt the golf course when it was a golf course. He's been coming to the park several times a week for months to search and dig. Up, oh, it's a little bullet. Along the way, he's unearthed some very interesting items, like bullets possibly dating back to the Civil War. Hopper was a main thoroughfare to Memphis. There was probably a century on the hill uh, back to the west here. And Coca-Cola bottles from the early 1900s. And this one happens to be from Memphis, Tennessee. And if a half dime from 1854 isn't old enough to grab your curiosity, how about a dime from 1838? First day I hunted, I found this. And my hunting partner like a fell out. But that's one of my best finds ever. Her says despite combing over practically every inch of the golf course, he isn't done yet. And as we say, it's not what you found, it's what you might find. Besides, her says even in places you've already looked, you just never know. I've probably found more unique stuff out here uh, in the last two months than I found in the previous three years. This wooden barrier has been put up to protect the Jonesboro Mall that has been severely damaged by an EF3 tornado, including several businesses destroyed. Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson said people in Arkansas are used to recovering from tornado damage, but what they're not used to is recovering during a worldwide pandemic that's now causing unique challenges. 
Governor Asa Hutchinson said he flew over several miles of damage left behind from an EF3 tornado that hit Jonesboro Saturday, and he witnessed damage unlike he'd ever seen before. I have not seen this level of devastation uh, in a tornado since I have been governor. The Red Cross has performed 35% of their damage assessment. So far, 55 homes have major damage and 145 have minor damage. 22 people were injured with minor injuries, something local officials are calling a blessing. The town's mall experienced severe damage, but was mostly empty because of concerns over COVID-19. COVID-19 was not in existence. God only knows on, on Saturday night at 5 o'clock, cheddar cheese, how many people will be in that restaurant. How many people would be in that mall? Jonesboro's mayor estimates 200 to 300 volunteers have already helped clean up debris. We found a group of Arkansas State students and alumni helping hand out food to those affected. We've uh, given out over 500 hamburgers and counting. Trying to give them, you know, something to look up to. You know, we know it's tough times, but we just want them to, you know, any little thing helps, you know. With the coronavirus continuing to spread, Governor Hutchinson says volunteers need to be very careful and recovering from this tornado will be challenging especially with the local economy already hit by business closures and layoffs. We've been hit with two disasters now, and we have to be mindful here in Jonesboro that we're dealing with uh, a tornado disaster and recovery, but at the same time, we can't forget that we're going through a uh, virus disaster, COVID-19 as well, because that has to guide you in your cleanup efforts. And you can see that I've got a mask on today, is that uh, we will get through this, but again, we have two enemies we're fighting. One we cannot see, one we saw last night. As emergency responders, workers and volunteers clean up and rebuild, they're still asked to limit physical contact as much as possible and follow social distancing guidelines. This is a time that while we can't draw together physically, we need to draw together uh, emotionally and spiritually as a community to support each other. And I know that's what we do as Arkansas. Between here at the mall, the nearby airport, and several local neighborhoods, local officials estimate there's more than $100 million worth of damage. There is a curfew in effect here in Jonesboro from 9 p.m. Sunday to 6 a.m. Monday morning. Governor Asa Hutchinson has also requested a federal declaration of disaster to help aid local business owners and those who have had homes damaged. Reporting in Jonesboro, Chris Luther, WMC Action News 5. WMC Action News 5's Parker King has more on the festivities. Well, Ariana, this was one of several vantage points. Folks could watch the fireworks shooting off from the south point of Mud Island. Pair that with food trucks, live music, and crowds of people took folks back to pre-COVID-19 pandemic times and excited them for what the rest of 2021 has to offer. Well, it's super exciting to actually be able to have a celebration that everyone can come together and have fun. Hundreds found their way to the Mississippi River Sunday evening for a 4th of July tradition. It's the first uh, 4th of July um, that I've spent in Memphis. Damian Kohal is visiting from Barbados and said when comparing other vacation destinations across the world, the U.S. was the safest place. It's good. Um, it's, it's, it's like you know, reminiscent of what, you know, we had before the pandemic, you know, and, um, and I'm quite happy that we were able to actually, you know, get a taste of that again. We've been cooped up in the hospital or at home mostly, so we finally decided to get out this weekend, enjoy the weather and see some fireworks, so yeah. We've had a good time. Whereas Amanda Pittman and her family have been in the Mid-South for a year now, relocating for their daughter, who's a St. Jude patient. This event has them already looking for future outings. And I'm sure a lot of people feel that same way with COVID and all that. So it's really nice to get to see all these families out and the community coming together. July 4 is one of those great all American holidays. Uh, it's a great time for us to come together uh, and have fun together with family, with friends. And I really think that it's, you know, it's these types of events that bring the city closer. That's how you build communities. The Memphis River Parks Partnership, the group that put on this event, has a list of more events on their website so the party doesn't have to start and end at the 4th of July. We'll have a link to that website on our website, WMCActionNews5.com. In downtown Memphis, on the Mississippi River, Parker King, WMC Action News 5.